Well, welcome to this video of um, how to buy vintage fishing reels. And today I'm going to show you some specific issues uh, to do with buying centre pin fly reels. This particular group of reels, these, these are all the style design reels. Uh, they're probably around the 40s and 50s. Now this particular one is an Edgar Seeley fly light. These ones are Alcox popular, which are built by J.W. Young's. Now, in the older designs of these, what you generally see is almost like an evolution, if you like, of the way fishing reels are built. This piece here, this is a um, brass center bearing. When you buy this type of reel, you have to be careful to put the reel together and just rock it from side to side and check. As you can see, there's not really very much movement on this one, so this is actually quite a good one. Uh, despite all the muzzy paint and you can see here that there's a bit of a gap between where the washer and the screw goes on the top and that is because with this style of reel essentially there's supposed to be a spring washer at the base of here now we will replace this when we repair it but uh, that spring washer holds the drum off the cage and you sometimes see reels that come in that have got a lot of wear just around here where the, the cog here has been rubbing on the cage because there's been a missing washer. So this is one of the things you've got to check for. So you check for wear and you're checking for essentially that little washer that, that is crucial really. It has to be in place and it has to be a particular size. This is also an Alcox popular and it's slightly bigger. Now when you rock this from side to side it's actually pretty good but it's not quite as good as the other one. And I just wanted to show you the base washer which you can just see there that's what the base washer is supposed to look like it's supposed to be slightly sprung so it's cut it's cut and sprung as you can see when this one sits on the washer there is virtually no gap so you can see on that one right you can see there's a raised edge and this one it's nearly flush so that's the correct washer for this reel and that's something that you've got to look out for when you're buying this type of reel. Okay, so what I've got here is a discarded Alcox Popular. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons for that. It's got some damage to the case here. But if you look carefully at the centre bearing there, you can see how it tapers at the centre. <laughs> and you can, there are several ways that you can look at this. You can look at it and just see if it looks pretty bad. You can put the drum in and rock it. And if there's, if there's a lot of rock, you don't want to use that reel really because what happens essentially is if you tilt the drum because of the uh, wear at the top of this you can see it's how it's slightly tapered um, there's only a very very tight clearance between that cage wall and the drum edge if you tilt the drum which will happen when you get a heavy fish pulling on it um, essentially the reel drum will jam against the cage wall and your reel will jam so you're trying to pull in a heavy fish and then you, all of a sudden you've got a problem because your reel jams um, so you couldn't really use a reel like this and you can also check this if you've got uh, like a caliper gauge or a, a micrometer you can check this very quickly when you're buying the reel just to see if there's a lot of play in it. But the, the best way to do it is to rock the drum back and forth and see if it's excessive. So that brings me to this. Uh, this is an Edgar Seeley fly light. Generally speaking, Edgar Seeley had their reels made to a much tighter tolerance and a much higher spec. So when you're buying reels, if you see any of these going cheap, th this is probably a good buy. And, as you can see, one of the evolutions of this type of reel is that we no longer have a brass bearing, we have a steel bearing. It is just mild steel, it's not hardened steel or anything like that, but steel just doesn't wear in the same way that brass does. Brass is very soft, it's a very soft metal. And you can see in the centre there, that is, that is steel. The washer, I do actually have the washer for this reel, because at the moment I'm just cleaning it up to be painted, but uh, essentially because that's made of steel, you just won't get the wear and if you rock the drum from side to side you can see it hardly moved. If you actually look down it, it is nearly flush and there's just no gap because Edgar Seeley reels were made with pretty high tolerance to quite a high standard and that's why they're slightly more expensive in their day and they're also slightly more expensive now second hand 
because people know that instinctively whether they know the details or not is a different issue but uh, and so that's one thing to watch for is that the evolution of the brass center bearing to a steel bearing if you can get center pin reels like this even the ones with a screw in the center um, have a look at the back if it's a steel bearing you're probably buying a good reel and it probably won't be all that worn and you can also check it by rocking the drum like that okay so that brings me into this little section and um, we're now going to take a look at slater latches okay so this brings us to slater latches now slater latches generally uh, this particular reel is an old course Gilmore these were built by JW Young's 2 the slater latch generally has um, a little hinge point there and a spring which you can just see here so just there there's a lever so the lever fits over that hinge point and then the spring fits down the right hand side here and then you put this cap on and there are two types of cap you get this style which I think is possibly a bit newer and sometimes this style has logos on it Old Cox logo or the um, JW Young's logo and there's also another style where you have that style essentially the back of this is essentially flat it, it does have a, a slight recess rim so that, that that central area fits into here and it stops the spring getting jammed so you have to have the right cap you can't just put the wrong cap on you have to have the right cap for it now the difference the clear difference between this type of reel and the type that I showed you first is essentially that there is no basal washer to hold the drum off the cage what suspends the drum off the cage is that screw just there and it it touches the top of this post here the latch goes underneath that to stop the drum coming off and you have to adjust this screw just exactly right in order to hold the drum off the bottom of the cage and I'm, I'm going to show you later on in the video exactly a good way to do that okay this is a good example of the other type of slater latch and again as you can see here it's the latch which holds that drum off the back of the cage you can see there's no there's nothing touching at all with this particular style of slater latch the surface of the reel drum is flat completely flat and all of the complicated gubbins that fits the latch is actually on the back of the plastic in that respect it is slightly different and again we've got a spring here which in this particular case you often see people um, replacing these springs with uh, all kinds of things in one particular case I've seen one that was made of copper and one that was made of brass and God knows what else so it is worth checking and you can make them pretty easily out of spring wire um, you need about 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 mil spring, spring wire uh, which you can buy on eBay from China so when it's assembled on both types of slater latch it should look pretty much like that and uh, you can see that that obscures the uh, the screw there and that's because that goes underneath the little bobble on the reel there so when you recondition these you need to make sure that this is completely flat except at the very end where it's supposed to be turned up slightly and you you have your spring the right way around so that it avoids the hole where the screw goes now the screws um, you can't get the exact screw for these but they are M 2.5 so you can buy M 2.5s on eBay and, um, and you can just gently file the top a little till it fits and so you can replace them pretty easily uh, for, for only like a pound or so too you know it's not expensive to do or anything like that now uh, just just as a word of, of interest this particular style of reel this is a four inch they have a three screw base and all of the JW Young's reels have M 3.5 uh, set screws in the base base of the foot even the ones that just have two screws are M M3.5 so it's worth making a note of that just in case you need to repair your reel or replace a screw well that brings us to the end of the current video thanks very much for watching bye